Well, hello guys, thank you so much for watching this video and today we're going to be actually reviewing this really interesting, really amazing um, scan tool actually and it's actually from Mercedes and behind me is an amazing W123 240D but unfortunately this is, or actually fortunately, this one does not have any type of OBD1 or OBD2 port so we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to have to find another Mercedes to show you this scan tool and how it works, alright? So let's try to find something around. So. This is a 1995 Mercedes S600 W140. And unfortunately on this car, this tool does not work because this one uh, particular, this particular model does not have the uh, OBD2 uh, style connector. It has only the 38 pin connector under the hood. And I don't know if even I had a, the adapter, uh, whether or not this would work with the adapter to the 38 pin connector, which is under the hood. So as of right now, I can't test it out. So we have to find another Benz to test this thing so unfortunately there's a sad story about this car this is actually a w211 e55 amg it's got a blown engine <laughs> sadly 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 but we're gonna do some testing on the scanner that i got because this is an obd2 car and the scanner should work on this car finally <laughs> So the quick story about this uh, E55 is the owner was just driving it and then all of a sudden it just quit. And basically there's like no compression over there now in any of the cylinders. So, and he checked the timing chain was pretty tight and everything, but yeah, as of right now, we don't have many plans. There's actually a person interested in this car. He's gonna come pick it up and he said he's gonna save it. He's gonna rebuild it. So. Dylan's gonna open this amazing car and uh, I do like the wheels on this car though I mean they're really like nice there's the legendary car wheels wow the compressor is working that's crazy I think it's just trying to talk to the baby Benz right there. <laughs> Amazing. The interior is like immaculate on it. Oh, yeah, it's clean. Let's pop the hood too. So we're gonna grab the scanner, connect it to the OBD. And of course the OBD port is loose. It's not attached properly. That sucks. Okay, we'll figure that out. Okay, let's connect that to the scanner. Key ignition, key on. All right, let's take a look at this. It's my first time using the scanner, but this is pretty cool. The only problem is that we won't be able to start this car. But other stuff, I think we'll be able to. So I just have to turn off the flashlight. So first thing is, it's asking for the language. German car should be Deutsch. We'll go with the English. Next step. Ooh. That is interesting. America, Denver, America, Chicago, Mexico. What is that? All right. I uh, guess I don't know. I mean, this is a US car. Uh, oh, that's a lot. Oh, it's just. Uh, never mind. Just asking the time zone. That's not really important. But we'll do I thought he was asking about the car. Where was it made? Alright. 
So we'll just skip that. Next. Network. I don't have the network right now. Does this work off of a network? Hmm. I don't know. So I guess it's going to need a, a network. Let me see. So now we're doing the health report. We actually finished all that setup and stuff with everything. So now it's basically the ignition is on, but it's testing a bunch of modules and everything. And it's giving all the fault codes on those modules. So it's gonna take a while. It's scanning all of them. Electronic ignition, but yeah, there's there's a bunch of modules and you can see by doing the health report, you can pull all of them up and you can see everything all the codes right there in each module so where is there's a sam signal uh, signal acquisition module they always have fault codes bcm instrument cluster uh, where is the engine control module each door has its own module wow oh that's crazy engine control module look at that no codes it's good <laughs> well that's probably because the battery was disconnected maybe there are some codes but okay switch ignition on let's see ignition is on okay so you can read fault codes like that by just pulling that code search yeah, there's no codes, but you can always search. Like, if you need help with, like, code or something, look, it pulls up Google. Look, that's crazy. That is actually super cool. That's probably why they want the Maybe that's why probably they were asking for the network. Yeah. yeah. That is really cool. Okay. You can search up the codes. Clear codes. Uh, data stream is actually something that I always love looking at. But data stream is... On this car, like, we can't really do it because... This thing doesn't start. But there's everything. You can select each one of them. Let's see. Uh, fold counter. Engine speed. So, like, if you're trying to see which cylinder misfires. Like, let's say you have P0300 code. You're trying to see which cylinder misfires. This is what you pull up. And then click OK. And literally, we'll pull everything right now it's just like i said it's not running so it won't show anything but it will show engine rpm and if each if something like let's say cylinder 2 misfires it will show the misfire counters on it so that's what's cool about the data stream there's a bunch of tests you can do a bunch of data stream options a lambda control for your o2 sensor oh man there's a lot of cool stuff actually in this uh I really wish this thing worked uh, better on the 90s benzes. Uh, and then you can clear, let's see, special function. Let's look at that, special function. Uh, learning, so you can program some stuff. Let's say, uh, check sensor adaptations. What is that about? Mm. I wonder if you can like activate the air compressor. Uh, let's try, let's try in a second. But yeah, there's there's a bunch of like, tests you can do correction programming what is that so let's say if you're doing idling specified speed with gear engaged so if you're cleaning the throttle body something goes wrong throttle like the idle gets out of whack you can always reset it by clicking one of these or like relearn the idle or whatever uh, so that's just one of them a lot of cool interesting stuff initial startup actuation test okay I believe with this we can activate a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. air cooler circular exhaust flap switch over so we found the suspension we're gonna go in there there's some faults in it switch ignition on ignition is on I'm gonna see what tests it's uh, gonna offer obviously we can also again read the 
fault codes on that. No fault codes for some reason. I don't know why. Because the report showed some fault codes. That's strange. It even gives you module information. What is that about? Print information page. Okay, it gives you the information of the module that's installed in this car. So if you change the module, it's going to give you a different information of that module. Basically, when it was made and what was done to it. That's cool. What's the data stream about? Voltages, level sensors. There's a bunch of cool info, honestly saying. Like if you're diagnosing like suspension on this car, because it's got air ride suspension. That is cool. Vehicle level. What is that? vehicle level okay select even gives you the vehicle level position the rear vehicle level minus 42 millimeter so I'm assuming that's from the fender the lip of the fender or quarter panel to the tire maybe left front vehicle speed level right front cool stuff and the rear guess measures only uh only uh not both of them i guess mm -hmm. uh, actuation test fill suspension struts <laughs> that is crazy wait a minute wow because this car is sitting low now right it's still low Dylan? yeah it's it's Still low. It's okay. About 45 so let's see if we can like activate the um, the air compressor on it and see if it's gonna front rear axle raise lower. Oh my gosh! Raising of the suspension struts on the front axle. Okay, so if I press F3, it should raise the front of the car now. That's actually pretty factory. Is it? It's it's a little low, but it's it's not all the way though, right? Yeah, it needs to go up. Okay. So I'm gonna do the, the fill air struts. And... All right, so we're gonna do uh, fill suspension struts. Fill left, so it's actually have to do it one by one. Fill left front suspension strut. I mean, let's try it. Uh, front level. Vehicle may only be lower than its wheels when the actual actual pressure. In All right, so F three. Let's try it. And compressor is working. I don't know why it shut off, but it was working. Maybe because it's all the way up already. Is it? I don't know the spec, but I heard it run. Yeah. Okay. What if we try to lower it? We could try, or try, so let's go back. And then fill uh, left rear suspension shut. So then do start F3. Okay, it turns on, but it turns off. I'm not sure what that's about. The compressor does turn on. activating maybe it's full that's why it thinks that it's full or something you know so is it, we can probably reset the sensors uh, we, we could also we could also can, i wonder if we can like um deflate them too maybe there's a release pressure release pressure in the left front suspension strut let's see is anything gonna happen yeah look at that it's releasing the pressure Man, this tool is powerful, man. That's crazy. Now let's try to refill it. So okay, try to it. refill it now. You just literally follow the instructions. Maybe, uh, maybe the what it is is you have to just keep pressing it, you know. So if you keep pressing it to refill, I'm gonna keep watching. It's it's raising, yeah. Okay, so the compressor is cycling, but you just gotta keep on pressing it. I think it does that so the compressor doesn't overheat or something, you know? That's why it cycles. But, but, yeah, but every time he presses to fill, uh, this thing is filling up. 
and it's raising actually that's some cool stuff wow i'm really impressed honestly with that uh with that toolkit literally there's a lot of other stuff you guys can do on it and check out and it's i'm actually really impressed you can also see the love like the pressure you can literally it shows you all the the levels and everything and, and where sensor normal. where the sensor is at it's normal now yeah I guess you just so it's it. all filled up now look at it <laughs> it's it's raised up <laughs> that's fantastic yeah i can do the same with the other ones too so if you're in an emergency uh, as long as your compressor is working you can always use that scan tool to raise something up you know obviously if you don't have a big hole in your um, air shock it will raise up i really apologize for all this like you know nighttime filming but that's the only time i was able to actually do it and show you guys how the scan tool works i'm really impressed with it a really super cool scan tool um ed from diag you know thank you so much for the scan tool it's really amazing and for you guys i really recommend going and checking out the scan tool the link will be down below and uh, we're gonna play with it a little bit more uh, i wish we could actually have this car running so we could show you the uh, data stream of the engine itself uh, rpms and sensors and whatnot but this baby needs a rebuild yeah so now we literally managed to inflate all four wheels because when the person is coming to pick up this car it's going to be easier for him to load it up or whatever onto a trailer but yeah i'm really impressed with like this thing literally you can do the health report you can do anything on it um I'm really impressed. It's just this little scan tool can do so much. It's super amazing. Yep. But let's show you this car. I mean, this thing is super clean. Not gonna lie. And I do love this car. I was even considering buying it off of Dylan, but I just fortunately can't have a lot of other cars to, um, you know, fix up and restore. But we're glad that uh, he found a, a good home for it. And the guy is gonna pick it up really soon, so that's uh really cool and yeah this scan tool is actually a life changer you can clear the fault memory switch off okay now clearing fault memory please wait switch ignition on Complete it. Cool. No fault. And that is it, my friends. Cool stuff. And I already had this thing identified automatically 2004 and the VIN number. You can also select the systems without doing the health report, just going to each system separately. All the modules. It's got some transmission codes. Uh, let's clear them. Interesting. When uh, it clears the fault codes, it's asking me to switch the ignition off. That's funny. Now you wait. all right guys so I, I hope you enjoyed this uh a video i mean it may not be the best video but i'm really proud and super happy to have one of these scanners and it also came with two manuals so and obviously me as a rookie i didn't read the manual at first but you know i was able to figure it out how this stuff works and it's really really cool so super happy and really totally recommend everything um you know as far as this scanner uh it's really really worth it unfortunately this car is 1989 so it doesn't have the access the ability to read this you know the scanner is not going to be able to read it and that one is 1976 so and look at that cat right there huh look at that cat what are you doing ghost huh 
what are you doing right there you like the car huh why okay so anyways all the links will be down below guys go ahead check it out amazing scanner